Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, our virtual program this evening. We are so excited to have everybody joining us in this Zoom meeting this evening. Um, we, this is happy hour, so I hope you have um, a snack or, or maybe a beverage uh, while you're with us today and that you'll um, really engage and be part of the conversation. Um, my name is Cindy Vandenbosch and I'm from Turnstile Tours. And we have been doing tours of the Brooklyn Navy Yard now for, I don't know, like 12, 12 years or more. Um, and through that time, we've met all these amazing artists and there have been, you know, all different kinds of, of um, interesting works of art that they've created over time. Um, but today we're gonna be really celebrating uh, an exhibition that's on view called Atmosphere for Invention that's at Building 77 and Building 92. Um, both are accessible public buildings. And so I'm, I'm overjoyed um, to have the opportunity to welcome um, Carly Bisa, who's the Executive Director of Exhibits and Programs. Um, she'll be joining us to provide some broad context about the exhibition itself. Um, and then we're also uh, going to be um, engaging with and actually trying to do an open studios, but in a virtual way, we're gonna go out live together to three different artist studios at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So we have Jackie Meyer, who's gonna be uh, joining us. Uh, and this is the work from her exhibition. She'll be talking more about that. Um, Paul Campbell, uh, who has created public, uh, public art in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, both this time and previously. So we'll be talking to him about that. Uh, and then we have Tracy Wishpard, um, who uh, created uh, really a, a work of art that speaks to, to healing. Um, and I should say, you can see that she's wearing a, a mask uh, with this installation that this whole project was underway during the pandemic. So we'll also be discussing sort of themes of, of community and public art and healing and regeneration um, throughout the program today. Um, in terms of, of just a little bit of background on uh, guidelines for engagement, um, we do wanna make this interactive, but we also wanna let you know that this is being recorded. So if you don't want your, if you don't want your person to be on screen, just please be sure to stop your video, um, but you can start your video if you, if you don't mind. And um, I'm sure some of, some of the artists and presenters will appreciate seeing people's reactions. Um, also, we, we ask that you um, stay muted uh, during the early part of the program, but then towards the end, we're gonna open it up and do a Q and A. Um, so to avoid audio distractions, we just ask that people's microphones remain muted. Um, there's also closed captioning that's available. So if you click on the CC button at the bottom of your, of your screen, you should be able to pull up a live transcript or subtitles that appear at the bottom of the screen in real time. One thing I will say is that this is Zoom's automated captioning so that some names or uh, specialized vocabulary might not appear exactly uh, as it should, but uh, we hope that it'll help uh, support those out there that might might want to read along um, with what's being said live. Um, so we're here in the spirit of community today. We want everybody to be present, curious, have a great time, be respectful of one another. Uh, we're going to ask questions and share in the chat. So when we go live out for the open studios, just like if you stepped into a studio and you were sipping a glass of wine and maybe eating some cheese and talking to the artist, um, when we go into the artist spaces, they're gonna be showing us around um, one of the artists is even doing a demo. Uh, so we're gonna get a chance to learn about their work, but they're excited to hear your questions too. So you can go ahead and drop those into the chat. And my colleague, Amanda Adler-Brennan, who's behind the scenes will be uh, sort of our conduit today, sharing those questions and making sure that we get them and ask them of the artists. Um, and then at the very end, like I said, we're gonna bring everybody together um, to have a conversation. Um, and so that's the in, uh, guidelines for engagement. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Turnstile Tours, I'll give you a little bit of background. We are a social enterprise tour business. And all of our tours are in partnership with different nonprofit organizations. Now, during the pandemic, we have shifted over to virtual programs and have done now about 250 distinct programs, uh, some of which have been with a few of the artists that we're seeing today. Um, but 
Uh, we do continue to do these virtual programs, but we're excited that finally come spring and summer that we'll be doing more and more, we'll be able to do more and more tours in person. So a few of our upcoming programs, also part of Jane's Walk as our program is today, tomorrow, uh, we're going live to the Brooklyn Army Terminal uh, to do a program there. And then on May 12th, we kick off a series uh, really celebrating Thai Americans and Thai culture in the United States. Um, and we'll be interviewing a, a Thai importer and distributor um, that's based in Brooklyn. Um, now, I, on May 13th, um, we're doing a program at the Brooklyn Navy Yard um, with New York City by Design. Um, and then uh, going to Bush Terminal on that same day in the afternoon, and then back to the Brooklyn Navy Yard on May 16th, where Bednark Studio uh, will be joining us and we'll be going through their space. And that's also by uh, NYC by design. Um, so that's a little bit of what's going on. Um, we are doing Prospect Park walking tours and we hope to be launching many of our other tours, socially distanced and in small groups soon. Um, but of course we appreciate everybody's support. These are our membership programs. Um, and also today, this is a program that we're doing in partnership with the Municipal Arts Society. So we also encourage you to sign up for memberships with them as well. But really for us, this membership program has helped us get through the pandemic um, and we have been so grateful. And um, so we'll be updating that membership program to include some of our live tours and other benefits. So this is our plan for today. That's about it. Those are the opening announcements. If anybody has any questions, drop them into the chat, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I'd like to welcome, I'm gonna stop my screen share and welcome Carly Besaw to the program. Hey, Carly. Hi, Cindy. Thanks so much for, um organizing this and inviting me and the artists to speak. I just want to really make sure I take a moment to thank you and the whole team at Turnstile Tours. I'll mention you've been providing programs uh, for the yard for over 10 years. Um, so you're our great ambassador. So we love the Turnstile programs and you are our go-to program people. So thank you. Thank you. And Carly, you've done so much creative work in the time that you've been at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And I was hoping that you could kick things off just by describing describing your role at the Brooklyn Navy Yard and, and sort of giving us a little bit of context in that regard. Yeah, so uh, um, a lot of people don't know what the Brooklyn Navy Yard is. So we are working at a manufacturing and light industrial site, a community really of over 500 small businesses and a small business can be one freelance artist like the ones you're going to see in this talk or they can be you know several dozens of workers everything from technology artisanal fabrication painting to you know universities exploring science so it's a really awesome dynamic community here and my job is really to oversee the public engagement and creative place making so championing our history and our legacy. Uh, we're 220 years old uh, this year and also really specifically supporting the creative community. To unmute myself, there we go. Um, that, that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a dynamic place to work, right? Like there's, there's so many artists and there's makers and manufacturers and people working in so many different fields. Um, and that lends itself to doing really interesting exhibitions um, that feature the unique work of the many artists in the yard, um, and which is what you did during the pandemic with Atmosphere for Invention, this exhibition that's on view right now. Um, what was it like um, pulling that together? Can you take us a little bit into the process? <laughs> yeah, so we, I, I started in late 2017 and we put together like a short strategic plan for like two years that really focused on more public engagement. And so we were just rolling into the second phase of the plan, which was really like a little bit more robust efforts. And then COVID-19 um, hit and all the priorities went out the window. And part of our mission as a nonprofit landlord and business service provider is to help small businesses survive and thrive. And so everybody was kind of all in on um, helping our businesses shift to the production of PPE and then to help our companies get PPP loans. Um, and during that time, I was asked to really focus specifically on the needs, the specific needs of the creative community because shifting to the production of PPE and getting those PPP grants just weren't really an option for a lot of them. And so 
we came up with a lot of different strategies. We started a small business education series just for artists. Um, we shifted our exhibitions online so that, you know, artists could still share their work. And then the public art program was this dream that we said, you know, we should do this. This should be really great. This should be our next round of our strategy. And it just got bumped up because it was that perfect combination of, you know, we've spent the last 20 years, 30 years rehabilitating the site and bringing in all these businesses. And in a matter of a year, we didn't want them to have to move out and shutter their doors. So it was creating a public art program and you think public, oh, public benefit. But for us, the baseline really was paid opportunities for the artists at the yard who were struggling with, you know, all the shows being canceled, the opportunities lost. So it was this perfect overlap for us supporting these artists and creating this public benefit. Because for those of you who aren't really familiar with Wallabout Bay, it's a really cool site, but there's not a lot of free arts and cultural resources for families. So by creating public art, we could give people the opportunity to experience art and culture in safe, socially distanced ways. So it was it was really exciting to pull it together. Oh, that's it's it's, it's so great. And and um, could you tell us a little bit about the process of recruiting the artists? Today we're going to get to meet with three of the artists. Um, we do have some images and photos of, of some of the other artists that were featured in the exhibit. Yeah. I don't know if you want to walk us through some of those sure. and share like some themes that, that organically emerged from. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, I'll speak a little bit and then I'll let you know when I'm going to start talking about the slides. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounds good. So we put out an open call to um, our tenants in September that basically said, we have this opportunity. Um, we're looking for some public art for some of our spaces. Would you apply? And the guidelines were very broad, like here's your location. And basically we're looking for things that are really site specific and inspired and somehow by the legacy of VR, the legacy of innovation, invention, creativity. So that's a pretty broad lens. And we got um, over 20 um, proposals and that ranged in material and theme. And we could, unfortunately, this time around only select nine. We only had so much space this time around, but we launched the program, it's gonna continue. So this first round, we selected nine artists and three loose themes kind of did emerge. So if you wanna start the slideshow, I can talk about the six artists that aren't here tonight. So this first work, which is also the work that's behind me, um, this thing that I'm going to talk about first is community and togetherness. So a lot of the artists were really interested in the sense of like the community coming together in response to COVID. And these are actually pictures of workers at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, the property managers, the security guards, the people working in the facilities team who came every day to make sure that the Navy Yard stayed open. We never closed our doors because if we closed our doors, that means 500 businesses could not work. So these people came in at the height of the pandemic, taking public transportation, staying late, working overtime, um, so this artist had this great idea to take these portraits to really add the personality. And like he said, you know, I really want to show them as like superheroes. So you see some of those poses and it's really fantastic. Um, the next artist, uh, oh, and I think there's a slide. This is JC at work installing um, in 77 in the mass. So you can see this was December, so the height of the pandemic. <laughs> I just want to say when I stepped into the building and saw this exhibit, it touched my heart because we've worked through the years with, with so many of these staff members. And I just loved kind of seeing, seeing them honored um, in this yeah. like joyful and engaging um, installation. Yeah, an interesting background to this is um, we had organized two different days of shooting with the artist and eight people for each day, so 16 photographs. And we just put out an email to security and operations team. And the first day, some people kind of came in and were a little shy and the word got out. And the next day there was all these emails like, I want to sign up. I want to sign up. So the artist stayed the entire day, like 10 hours. And instead of shooting eight portraits, he shot 16. So on the wall, you actually see 24 instead of 16, just because like, really the sense of enthusiasm and people were so excited. He gave the artist these images for free. So they have them, they can print them um, to celebrate their work. So it really was a really joyful thing to see and people coming in and together in December, you know, that was still early days. You didn't really see a lot of people, right? Um, this is by Tatiana Oroka. And Tatiana is really interested in um, nature and specifically kind of nature in the urban environment. And she works a lot with students. And this work here was actually with middle school students right across the street from the yard. And they went around and took photographs of um, the natural wildlife and um, 
I'd say flora and fauna of the area around the Navy Yard. And then she helped teach the kids how to look for interesting shapes and objects and take photographs. And then she printed this combination of collaged prints and pressings and um, installations. And so there's Tatiana just kind of, she created this grid system. And kind of our joke together is um, it, she spent more time figuring out the grid system than actually putting up the art work um so um the sense of like really thinking about how this is going to be displayed for the public the artist went above and beyond really thinking about what it's going to be like for you the viewer to come into this space and really take a step back and enjoy what you're seeing so i hope that's coming across in the photos and certainly you know i'll give you more information on you know how to see this in real life yeah um, and yeah. this is this is not Tatiana's only work anybody that's been in the 42nd street subway station at bryant park or city point downstairs where there's the food hall. Her work was on display for a couple of years, actually, for the MTA Arts program, I think it was, or NYC Transit Arts. Yeah. So it, it, it may be familiar kind of a, a stylistically. Um, to mm -hmm. And then this artist here was named, is named Noel Copeland, and he hails from Jamaica. And so he wanted to just bring in a Jamaican theme. This is called Blue Mountain. Um, and he said, I'm so inspired by the diversity of people that work in the Navy Yard that I want to bring them joy. I want them to come in and see something bright and colorful, and it represents how everything comes together in harmony. And so the relationship with all the birds together. Um, and he really sees the bird as this symbol of entrepreneurship. Um, you know, a bird is free to make decisions and take risks. And so that was a symbol for him. So it was really nice that he really wanted to people come in because this is right off the entrance of 77 to just smile and be happy to be at the yard. And it, so it was really lovely. Um, so like I said, it just kind of organically emerged this theme of community. And here you can see um, the installation process. Um, another tenant of ours, um, Underground Signs, um, helped install several works. So it really was a community affair from the art creation to the curation to the installation. And um, we, um, Carly, we have a question here. Robert says, where are the ships? And actually, Robert, if you look at this image here, you can see the cranes in the background. Yeah. So the, yeah. yeah. So that's a great, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we no longer build ships at the Navy Yard, right? So the, it was an actual shipyard from 1801 to 1966. But the wonderful thing is we still repair ships. There's a company called GMB Shipyard that you can see the cranes right there in the back, still operational. And between 30 and 50 ships come to the Navy Yard each year and using three dry docks that are still operational, they service them. So like a car needs a tune-up, a ship needs a tune-up too. Um, and I believe... Um, ships are required every three to five years to come in kind of for a checkup. So definitely if you come to the yard, there are ships there being repaired, but in terms of like the warehouses where the ships are being constructed, not so much, but the buildings are still there. The dry docks are still being used. And if you're lucky, the Coast Guard is in. So we have a little kind of connection to our military past for sure. Um, so we segued into this, another theme that emerged, which was um, really capturing the moment. A sense of time and a lot of the artists um lindsay walt whose work is seen here tracy who's in this call she'll talk later and then the next person we'll see uh, monique really wanted to kind of make a moment to reflect but also bring joy and so this is called a touch of color and it's just really exploring different shapes and colors and the artist was kind of playing with the background sky color here with the blues and the whites and so she is a watercolor painter and she worked with trevor who you saw in the last photo um figuring out how to make these semi-transparent gels to put on the window. So the wonderful thing is it brightens up the space, but you can still see everything that's moving in and out um, to really kind of make you stop and appreciate the moment. And here you can see them installing together on the scissor lift. Another little fun fact for many, the scissor lift was the most fun experience for the installation. Um, so they had to go through a certificate process and they had to get training with their chief engineer. Um, and the funny, like, I kind of laugh because I'm like, oh, I can call on a bunch of people to get on this scissor lift. I personally don't find a lot of joy in it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of going up on height and, you know, going high. Um, but everybody was like all hands on deck and we had to really space out the installation because of COVID. So only two or three people at a time, you're wearing a mask, you're constantly hand sanitizing, you're trying to stay apart. Um, so for many artists who often work alone in the studio, they're like, this is the most I've ever, I've talked to someone in months is talking to you about this or talking to Trevor when installing. So there's a lot of benefits that you don't even see 
with the artwork that really happened here. And then this is Monique Lucchetti's work. Um, she was inspired by the magnolia tree in her backyard, how it was still going through its growth cycle, right? Into, you know, spring, it blooms, and then the petals go away, it looks a little dark and ugly. And then the green leaves sprout, and it's this big regalia of energy. And then it goes back into the winter period of dormancy. And she said, isn't that amazing? Like looking at these trees, they're still going on, nature's still going on, we'll, we're going to be okay. So she wanted to kind of show the roots and the tangling as something that was really beautiful in the sense that it's growing and evolving. But I also like that it's not the green regalia, that it's the roots, that we have these strong roots and the growth. So I kind of like the symbolism here. And you can see this on the back door. So this work is actually next to the work you just saw. So it's really interesting as you walk through the space from Flushing, you get these really cool images um, on the um, glass. And then, as I mentioned before, you know, we see install here. De Gaulle was installing this work. So another tenant that prints and installs work, totally a community affair um, installing here. And then um, I would also put Tracy into this group of really capturing the moment. But again, she's on this call. So I'm going to let her speak for herself. And then that rolls us into the last group, um, which these artists were really inspired by the site, um, the sounds, the movements, the shapes. And so here, this is kind of a geometric structure um, inspired by like a root system, a nervous system. The artist also said it kind of reminds her of like organisms in the water when she, you know, was thinking about the Navy Yard and kind of how all these things kind of are connected and grow from one another. Um, this is just metal. Uh, you can't really tell. So in this picture here, there is Beth installing with her friend. And we tried a lot of different spaces in building 77. Um, so, you know, all opinions welcome, go and see it. Um, but there's a few of them kind of elevated. So you have to look up. It really is about kind of stopping and seeing and looking around. And then here, you know, I think I'd also put Jackie and Paul in this category of being inspired by this, the site in a very physical way for Paul. And then I think in a very um, kind of conceptual way, Jackie. Um, and again, I'm not going to go into that because they're here. I'll let them speak to themselves. But these these kind of emerge, these kind of themes, and that's where the name kind of atmosphere for invention came from, um, the inventiveness of the proposals. But for 220 years, be that building ships, naval innovation, or artists or artisans, this sense of invention is just something that is, you know, persists. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sort of bringing in the work of all of these other artists as part of this open studio visit. We really encourage everyone can go see it, right? Like you can still go see this exhibition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, building, so on Flushing Avenue, we do have some publicly accessible buildings. So a lot of people also don't know that. So 77 is Flushing and Vanderbilt, super easy to get to. That's where you'll see the majority of the work. And then two doors down in building 92, there's a really massive work by Tracy. Um, and we have our permanent exhibition, which is Brooklyn Navy, our past, present, future. Because of COVID, it's a historical house. It's not very big. We haven't been able to reopen it, but we are doing an event with Tracy on May 13th, 20th, and 22nd. So hopefully we can cut and paste that link into the chat where you can come and meet Tracy, see the work. And then we're also going to open the exhibition just on those three days for small groups. Absolutely free. You do just have to RSVP. So um, 92 is open Monday through Friday day from nine to five you can pop in but I would really recommend the program it's cool to come down to the navy yard you can go into 92 walk over to 77 see the other work grab a Russ and daughter's bagel get a beer at transmitter walk to the back see those ships for that person who asked take the NYC ferry and then you know there's other things that are open so it's a really great like afternoon of discovery certainly and before we go out to the artists, one last question, which is, I know that there's other work that you're doing mm -hmm. um, in terms of public engagement right now. Yeah. Uh, and could you speak to just a few of the other re like online resources that people can find? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So our website is brooklynnavyyard.org and we'll share a few links specifically. Um, we have an online exhibition right now called A Moment Materialized. And it's for artists whose work is specifically related to living and working in New York City during this time, during this pandemic. There's seven artists right now, but we're going to add three to five more. And then eventually they'll actually be on view in Building 92 when we reopen it. So that's a moment materialized. And we have um, a digital series that just launched this week. It's called Taste of the Yard. And it pairs one food business and one 
beverage business together. They meet each other, they go to each other's space, and then they prepare like their favorite dish or their favorite cocktail, and then they have a tasting together, and then they share these recipes in a PDF with everyone. So it's really fun. You can click on like, I need to get Jalapa Jar Salsa, I need to get Kings County Whiskey. So you have all the links, and then the wonderful thing is you can come to the yard and actually go to these restaurants and meet these people. And then for those of you who have kids, we launched last month a new series called Creative History where it pairs an object with an art making activity. So for the first few minutes, you learn all about an object and its history. And then an artist comes on and they teach a les lesson based on that object. And Jackie, who's on this call, actually is featured in the first season. So the first season is drawing history and her episode launches next Friday. So it's perfect timing. And she did a really cool episode for middle school students um, exploring the huge USS Austin that's in building um, 92 and teaching students how to kind of take a segment and draw it. So there's a lot of really great things going on. And, you know, although it's been a really crazy year, it's opened up a lot of doors, and a lot of momentum to keep on doing these wonderful programs with our artists. Well, Carly, I want to thank you so much. Um, and not only for sort of putting on this exhibit and supporting the artists in the yard, um, but yeah, you've created so many uh, resources that people can enjoy at home and um, in such a creative way. So uh, hats off to you. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to transition to our open studio section and um, how this is going to work. So thank you, Carly. And we'll see you back you. at the end. Yep. Um, so how this is going to work is we are at the, e at the beginning of each artist open studio, we're going to play a video from that artist and show kind of their install. It's about, each video is about a minute long, a minute to a minute 30. So to give us a little bit of an overview, and then we're gonna go live to the studio and get to see their space and have a conversation. And we really would love people to drop in questions and we'll send them along to the artists. Uh, so um, I think what we're gonna do is, um, play the video of uh, Jackie Meyer, who's gonna be our, uh, uh, Jackie Meyer. Jackie Meyer is gonna be the um, first video. Um, so we can sort of uh, be coming on in just a second. Um, in the meantime, if uh, while we're waiting for the video to come up, if anybody would like to share in the chat, have you been to the Brooklyn Navy Yard? Have you been on a tour with us? Or have you been to one of the open studio visits? Um, we've also participated in James Walk at the Brooklyn Navy Yard before and done walks along the perimeter as, long, as well as inside the yard. Uh, or does anybody have a personal connection? Like maybe your father, or grandfather, or grandma, or mother, or sister, or somebody has worked at the Navy Yard. That would be interesting to hear. Um, and, and we'd love to know that. Um, it's, always, it's always rewarding and, and fun to hear about people's connections. Okay, so it looks like the, the video is ready to go. So Andrew, take it away. Hi, my name is Jackie Meyer. I'm a painter. I've been in the Navy Yard for about eight years. I use color and shape to create oil paintings. So the first thing I did was to really try to get a sense of the space, to look at the wall that I would be painting on. There's two large pillars in front of three sections of wall. It's a very long wall. So I drew out a design of three different paintings and I tried to connect them using the pillars as a kind of separating but also connecting point. So the next step was to start painting and I had already pre-mixed all the colors. Um, so I followed a, a map of, of colors and the shapes and started getting the paint on the wall. Um, it was really exciting to have people come by and give me feedback. Um, normally I paint alone in my studio, um, so to paint in public was a completely different thing. And to paint on that size scale was incredible. So the piece is called The Rolling Tide, and it's really um, spirals discussing the evolution of growth and regeneration, much the way our lives are, um, how patterns repeat, and yet we still move forward. It's also about the life in the time of COVID, how our routines are continually repeating, yet time is passing both quickly and slowly. Okay. Um, so 
we are going to welcome uh, Jackie and go Hi. to your studio. Hey, Jackie, good to see you. <laughs> you um, too. So it was neat to hear about this being really your first, you've been an artist for a long time, but your first uh, work of public art. Yes, um, it was quite a, um, a job to do and I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, it was the biggest piece I'd ever done. Um, so it took a lot more planning than what I'm used to. Um, and then, you know, executing took, you know, seven full days of, you know, painting, which was a lot. And the scissors lift, which was lots of fun, but also a little scary for me. So <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm going to remove my my image so people can see into your studio. And we really sure. want to do this like an open studio. So I also want to invite people. You can start your videos so we can see your reactions. We'd love to hear your questions. Um, and so feel free if you want to open up your video, start your video. Um, you could do that, but no pressure. Um, so I'm going to remove my image here so that we're going to see you in full view. Sure. Um, and hopefully we can get a, get a little tour and learn about some. Okay. Topics. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so I'm going to turn my camera uh, around so you can see my studio. Um, these are the windows. And I think this is something that um, people are really most interested in seeing when they first come to this studio. Um, they kind of go right over to the windows and um, my studio overlooks dry dock one. Um, so um, there is a ferry in there right now. It came in, I think yesterday, it's the Gover Governor's Island Ferry that they'll be working on. Um, I watched them today. They pulled out most of the water. They had the divers here, making sure the boat like landed right on those big blocks. Um, I've kind of made up how it all works in my mind because um, I've watched them so many times. Um, and interestingly, I'm starting to feel like what I see out my window is, is moving into my paintings. Um, so um, let's go over and see, um, here's my little desk. And here's um, one of the paintings that was an inspiration for part of the mural. Um, it's a smaller painting, maybe 24 by 24. And um, this is actually replicated on the larger scale to the far left on the big mural in building 77. Um, here is my table and some brushes. Um, so here are some of the new works that I'm um, working on. I often work in watercolor first um, and ink and draw up these um, smaller pieces. Um, and now I'm starting to transpose them over into oil. Um, for, for some reason, I have reintroduced a, a grid, a loose grid, and, and this, the curves are still there, but the spiral has kind of taken a backseat. Um, so I'm working with straight lines and curved lines, trying to like pull them together um, to make a painting. Um, so these are some works in progress. Um, and then we have a nice pile of paintings over there. Um, so so we, have a, we have a question. We have a question sure. from the audience. So um, uh, there's a question about uh, whether you did the whole mural in small scale before doing it in a larger scale. Like, did you have one whole, we saw that example, yeah. uh, the very first painting yes. that you showed us. Yeah, so what I did was, um, I took like three different paintings that already existed and I put them together um, digitally. And then I drew on top of this digital photo um, and connected the pieces and then changed the colors um, to make them coalesce. So I didn't actually do a, a, a full drawing but I did a digital drawing and a digital map. Um, it just seemed easier for me than to, to, to do an actual hand drawing. Um, so that was something I don't usually do, um, but I did you know, need to see it and plan it. And then I actually, um, cut and pasted it right onto the wall um, using photos to see what it would look like. Um, those big pillars were really a, a challenge for me um, because they intersected the space so much. And I didn't, I didn't want to ignore them, like pretend they weren't there because they were. And so that's why I decided to put three together, but tie them together, like rolling, rolling through. Um, and, and so, I, mean, what, I yeah. mean, what was going, I mean, during this time, during the pandemic, in terms of your painting, like, has there been an influence from whether it's sort of the emotional experience or 
or just been, what's been going on in the world that's that's had an influence on, on the approach uh, to your work? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I, I, you know, there were a few months when when I actually didn't come to the Navy Yard. Um, it was just too difficult and um, not advised to travel. So uh, more than a few months. So I was working at home um, on little watercolors. And then, um, yeah, I think that um, certainly my work always involves, you know, repetition and pattern. And it, it seems like that just kind of was amplified with, with our routines being, um, you know, repeated and repeated and um, the time, you know, both moving so quickly and so slowly. Um, so it definitely had an effect on my work. Um, I think I'm still kind of coming through it um, now, uh, just trying to figure out what it, what it looks like in, in paintings. Um, um, I know some, are, some artists had a really productive time um, for the pandemic because they had so much studio time. But for me, it was, it was too um, difficult actually to work that way. So. And uh, Jackie, would it be possible for us to flip your camera so we can see your, see your face again? Sure, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and so is there, is there anybody that um, has questions? Oops, we just lost you there. Wait, start there. Yeah, we go. Coming back. There coming we go. Back. Um, okay. Is there anybody that has any questions or comments or things that you are curious about as it relates to Jackie's work? Um, Jackie, I know you've been in the Brooklyn Navy Yard now. Well, how, how long have you been there? And um, how did you decide to come to the Navy Yard? What do you feel you get out of it? So um, I've been in the Navy Yard, I think like close to 10 years. Um, I started subletting a space downstairs and then I eventually um, got a space in the same building upstairs. Um, I, I just love coming to the working waterfront. I mean, I just think it's fascinating to see um, the boats come in and out, to see people working um, outside. Um, it, it's just, it's absolutely fascinating to me. I love the people in my building and, and my friends and neighbors, the fellow artists and the other businesses that work here. Um, we definitely um, help each other out and, and look out for each other. So um, it's a great place. That is, that is so great. Um, is there, is there, did you, um, when you were in, uh, when you were actually installing your, or I guess painting the mural onto the, onto the wall in building 77, um, who was, who was working with you on, on that project, right? You weren't, you weren't doing that alone. Yeah, right. I worked with, um, Trevor, Trevor from Underground Signs helped, um, project the image onto the wall and then we traced it onto the wall. Um, so I got all the shapes and lines in there. And, but then I, I was the only one who was actually painting. I did all the painting. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. well, well, thank you so much. This has been uh, such a wonderful uh, studio visit. And um, we'll be coming back, bringing you back on at the end in case anyone has Great. any sort of burning questions. But we've really enjoyed visiting your studio space today. Um, and uh, I think, uh, so thank you. Thank you so much. You're um, welcome. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is um, we will play a video uh, introducing Paul Campbell um, as our as our next artist. And Jackie will bring you back at the end. If that is that. All righty. OK, That's great. Good. Bye. All right. Take care. So uh, Paul Campbell uh, is up next. My name's Paul Campbell. I'm a visual artist. I've had my studio here in the it's accessible for artists Ooh. to bring the art to the- Sorry, everybody, hold on one second. My name's Paul Campbell, I'm a visual artist. I've had my studio here in the Navy Yard for nine years. I think the Navy Yard has great creative energy. I really like it. And this is actually my third public project um, working with the Navy Yard. One of the bus stops was based on one of my paintings. And I was actually commissioned to do a 66-foot mural right in front of the building that we're in now before it was renovated. And when the renovation came about, the mural was taken down. So for me, it's really cool to have a painting inside the building now. And um, I'm really happy about that. This particular painting is based on road patches that you 
might have noticed in the in the streets they're really very commonplace they're everywhere in the in the roads around us and for many people they wouldn't uh, really pay much attention to them but for me they exist as beautiful drawings and sketches and potential for to make paintings from. I love seeing the potential for art in commonplace things. I feel that if my work can inspire others to see a little bit more beauty in the, in the commonplace things around them, then I've accomplished something and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. So that is uh, Paul Campbell um, and now Hey Paul, so we're coming we're coming into your studio. If you could turn your camera around so we can see your face. Sure, just one sec. Yeah, no problem. How's that? You look great. <laughs> as always. Um, so, you. Uh, Paul, you and I, we initially met when you were doing that project with the mural with the sort of like uh, you had me wear a GPS. <laughs> and I rode around, I, I did, I was doing a tour and that became part of the mural that you created. Um, and that's, that's how we initially, I think that's how we met. Um, and it's been such a pleasure um, to see your work and, and share it with the public. Um, but we're, we're grateful to be in your studio. And actually it looks like you're just outside of your studio. We are, we are. I thought we'd start just outside the studio for, for a few minutes. Um, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you very much for for joining and um, uh, I really appreciate it. I'm just gonna switch the camera around if I, if I can here. Sure. So I can show you. So actually in the hallway, I actually love the hallways of, the, uh, of this building. It's just these massive hallways. And I actually use uh, this space to hang some paintings on the wall, which um, I thought I was gonna get into trouble when I initially put the paintings up because they the yard rules were that you know you can't have anything in the hallway, nothing on the walls. So, um, and I, I I got a call from the from the who was then the president of the yard saying those paintings are fantastic. Thank you so much for putting them up. So <laughs> that's so just, great. But um, so you know I love doing public artworks, but I also you know have um, a studio practice where I do other types of artwork that are also um, always kind of, um, I like to think of them as quirky and maybe in unusual marks are made um, with in, in unusual ways. And so these are a couple of large things. That, sorry about the finger there. That, That's uh, okay. I wanted to walk you through. Um, and I'm not a camera expert, so pardon the. Um, Elizabeth just said that she's really, she loves the hallway view. She's enjoying this. <laughs> And, and Judy, Judy said that she thinks it's such, such an interesting observation about the road patches. My, um, um, our son, uh, Sam, who's helped out in a lot of the projects and is, he's my, my toughest and best critic, I think. Uh, he actually did a, an incredible dance uh, performance in this hallway at one point with another friend. So, so these are some large scale paintings. I just thought I'd um, start outside the studio and then take you inside. And actually before we enter, this is, um, uh, this is a kind of dysfunctional guest book that, um, that we created. And when I say we, a lot of the public projects that I've done, um, my family always pitches in. And, and um, so the way this works is this kind of dysfunctional guest book where people are encouraged to put um, a red mark on the closest spot that they're from with their, uh, a red thumbprint. Um, I don't know, can you see, is it? Yeah, kind of we can see it, we can see it. I, 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 and, and there's many people whose thumbprints I know are on there. <laughs> there are a lot of thumbprints on here and uh, I don't know if you can make it out, but it says you are here at the Brooklyn Navy, at the Navy Yard. And um, clearly it stresses that Brooklyn is the center of the universe. Um, we all, um, but you can see that, I mean, there are, it's, it's, you know, the more the merrier in this, uh, situation. So, um, there are, you know, folks from China and India and all around. So, um, oh, uh, sorry. we have a few, we have a few questions and comments. Um, Elizabeth said this reminds her of the Saul Steinberg, New Yorker cover. Um, uh. 
And then, and then uh, we have we have another question, which is: Are the studios concentrated in one or two buildings, or more spread out across the yard? Uh, and I guess that's not uh, specific to your work. Yeah. So the buildings uh, are not really there. There is one building that I think houses all artists. Um, this building is not that building. Um, there were actually were no walls at all on this floor when I initially moved in. So it was just 80,000 square feet of space. And I just said, you know, I'll take that spot over there um, once the cinder block walls are put up. So, um, but the artists are scattered about the yard and, and in this building, there really aren't too many artists. So it's kind of, um, there was, there was an artist across the hall that used to, he referred to as creative lockdown. Um, because when we're here, uh, there really isn't, uh, there really aren't too many people, other, other artists around to uh, um, engage. Paul, I have a question that's specific to your work and I, am, I might say this wrong, um, but it's Kay, someone named Kay uh, who's joined us. Uh, and I don't know if Kay wants to jump on and ask the question, um, but how do you, the question is how do you do the, uh, I, I really, an, an anemones. An, anemones, thank you. <laughs> how do you do the anemones? Well, I can show you the, I can show it, uh, is it K? I can show you in just a sec. So um, this is just a mock-up for the, for a, a public art project that we, that Cindy mentioned. It was a 65 foot wall in front of building 77. And this is another public uh, art project that um, an artist from Singapore and I did it on the, on the um, Coney Island boardwalk, which was really cool. Hey um, Paul, do you want me to show the image of the, um, speaking of the public art with the GPS, do you want me to show the image of the vendor out front? Yeah, sure, that'd be yeah. great. Okay, Thank so this is, this is a, a shot that, um, Paul, you can, you can speak to why, why this is a special kind of photograph for you. Yeah, so, you know, in doing both, you know, kind of the studio art and, you know, when public projects come up, I'm always happy to do them. And I think, you know, I was thinking about what the difference is. And one of the things that I've, I've noticed is that inevitably with the public art projects, um, people interact with them and it's, it's just really, it's always interesting and fun for me to see that, you know, and this was an example of, you know, the mirror, this was a, the 65 foot mural that I um, mentioned and Sydney, Sydney, Cindy mentioned that was really based on GPS tracks of, of people. And, um, and then, you know, this woman um, just parked her empanada cart um, in front of it. And it seemed to like, complete the work, you know, it, it was just terrific. Um, and, you know, that's happened with, um, with uh, the show in currently in 77, um, I stopped in, uh, sorry, I was just gonna scan, um, scan the studio. You can uh, see that uh, the ships are outside and I'm Yeah, just we can see the NYC ferries and you sort of have a view out onto dry docks five and six in a way, or at least out in that direction. Yeah. I had a really iconic view of New York until the um, building that was supposed to house WeWork went up, um, but you know, you can't control everything in life, right? So <laughs> no longer have that iconic view, but it's still pretty nice. Um, so anyway, so there's a little, a little um, scan. And, um, you know, just in thinking of the, the even the, the piece in that's, that's currently up in 77, each time I've gone into the building, you know, there are different people hanging out in front of it and you know, it's just, it's just really a delight to see, you know, I, I was, um, Cindy, I don't know if you can bring up the, the, that video, but. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew's got it here. Do we, should we watch it? Very cool. Yeah, I don't even think we need the sound, but we could just watch it and, um, uh, or the way it's. So yeah, so that's it. But you know, it just, um, 
you know, when I, I went in and I just, you know, love the fact that there was, here's this guy that's, you know, he was actually um, hosting a dance class in front of the painting. And I just thought, wow, that's fantastic. You know, and I remember with the um, mural in front of 77, when we were working on it, the, I think it was, it was either the 67 or the 69 bus came by and, and uh, the bus driver's eyes and I met and he just, you know, gave me the thumb, thumbs up. Uh, that he liked it. And I just thought, wow, that's great, you know. Um, so, you know, with the studio work, it's not so much um, the interaction is different. I won't say there isn't interaction, but it's just different. Um, so this is actually, um, this painting um, was uh, the inspiration for the painting that's currently up in 77, uh, smaller versions, 40 by 40 inches. And this is my work table. Um, you know, people always think that my studio is too neat, but I always think, how can you work in a messy studio? But I, the, the, the table is pretty messy. Um, so in answer to that earlier question, so those, those marks are made with these um, kind of cheap uh, plastic toys made in China. And I don't know, I got interested um, in working with these mar these marks because they seem to connote different things to different people and sometimes sometimes look like sea urchins and other times look look like other things, but it just seemed seemed like an interesting mark that's kind of stuck with me for a while. Um, these are um, as mentioned in the earlier video made. They're based on um, these road patches, which I don't. I don't know if that's if every if that's understood by everybody, but it's um, I'm sure everybody has seen these patches that um, are also you know like my other work. They're made in a very incidental way, in that um, when the road cracks, wherever it cracks, workmen come and and um, put tar on top of them and um, on the on top of the cracks, and then to me they just make these these incredible drawings. So I've I've been making paintings since about 2009 based on them. And this is an, uh, a painting that I'm working on currently, um, but I think it's almost finished. And yeah, it's, a, it's beautiful. It's, it's an, thank you. It's, it's an older work that I worked back into, which um, I found that somehow for me, that's worked out really well. Um, you know, sometimes I'll put works away. I think this painting, was the original painting was about 20 years old. And, you know, sometimes I'll just put paintings away and then, you know, dig them up and, and, and think, you know what, I wonder if I did, if I changed this or changed that. And so um, what I started doing is painting this kind of bluish background in, and it's sort of a ri ridiculous way to work, but um, it excites me. Um, a friend who's a very accomplished painter named Eric Fischel. I remember he introduced me to someone once and he said, you know, Paul's a good painter. He finds the most difficult way to make a painting. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but I guess I do. But, um, but you know, I paint the, the background last, which is instead of sort of painting this ground and putting marks on top of it, I'll typically go back in and, and paint the, the background afterwards. So um, I think it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And there's sort of in some ways a lack of predictability about what's going to happen on the canvas when you use uh, a toy or you use uh, some, some kind of object that's an intermediary. And um, I, I wanted to share a comment from Kay, who's with us, who said this really looks like dancers or uh, Japanese ideograms. Um, so oh, wow. Like, that's yeah. Well, that's here. Yeah. That, I mean, I think all of my work has... Um, a sense of movement is, you know, something that um, I've, you know, always been interested in. Um, you know, and I work on a variety of sizes. Sometimes I make, you know, can you see that little kind of orange green piece? And this um, little bit larger painting, kind of medium size for me, is um, just made by rolling a ball on a, on, on the canvas, um, and it just forms this natural arc um, that. I remember one showing my work to an, to an, and mo many people don't, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know if I looked at the painting, you know, how it was made, but I remember once showing my work to a, to an engineer 
it's kind of a brilliant guy named David Cowan. And he just immediately knew that, um, that these, that these marks were, were, were made by a ball because he said you could never draw that kind of perfect arc that's formed by the gravity and by nature. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. Um, Paul, can you turn your camera around so we can see you? We just have um, one last question before we go um, out to, to Tracy. Um, the question is, is from Ken and he wants to know um, like, well, first of all, you remarked that uh, you have a lot of space. It looks like you have a lot of space and the hallway. Wow. And um, have you been in the same space for nine years? Um, and have you always kind of been in this space? I've been in, I've been in this space for 10 years and um, moved here from Williamsburg. Uh, we, I had a loft in Williamsburg for 30 years, uh, never paid the rent late once and got evicted, which is a uh, this is the story of Williamsburg, but we, uh, my wife and I moved there in 1981. And then when we got kicked out, um, we decided to, I took a place in the Brooklyn Navy. So it's 10 years. And, um, and before you sign out, and we'll see you, of course, uh, later at the end of the program, when we all kind of come on for a conversation, but um, I want to congratulate you on the new baby in your family. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. She's beautiful. We're very excited. It's our, uh, um, yeah, first. Uh, <laughs> That's first wonderful. Um, well, thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll, we'll bring you back uh, at the at the end. Um, and so what we're going to do next is uh, go to our last artist. Um, so we've we've talked about regeneration um, and with Paul uh, seeing sort of beauty in everyday objects and sort of using those objects uh, to create beautiful works. Um, and now we're going to go to uh, Tracy uh, Wishbard, um, who created an installation that really spoke to what was happening during the pandemic. Um, and so, uh, Andrew, if we can queue up Tracy's video as an introduction, and then we're going to go out to her space for a demo. My name is Tracy Wishpard, and my husband and I have a studio here at the Navy Yard in Building 30 for over 15 years now. In Building 92, we realized that the space where we could put the piece was 20 by 20 feet. And reflecting on the year 2020 was such a painful experience. The number of deaths were climbing dramatically during the time when we were thinking about the work, we decided to make a massive, for this massive grief, a massive prayer flag that would provide a healing experience, something that people could do on their own and still feel for all of these people, some kind of memorial. At a time like this in particular, public art provides such an important function. You know, art isn't just decoration. Art is about ideas. It can move people, it can bring people together, it can drive them apart. Having the opportunity to actually make something that can be functional for people was really special to me. And uh, I hope that when people come and listen to the sound and see the piece, that it helps them to process their grief, their, helps them to formulate their hopes, and honors the people who've passed. So Tracy, we would love to bring you um, onto the program and go out to your studio. Um, we have you here with us. There we go. There we go. Oh. Yeah, there you are. Okay, great. It keeps asking me. Okay. okay. You're, you're all set. You have a okay. great connection. It's good to see you. Um, what a contemplative piece and one that, of course, is timely. Um, yeah, so if, if you could share with us a, a little bit about um, this work and the process uh, that you went through um, in order to create what is a dramatic piece inside of Building 92. It really speaks to the space. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, initially, uh, we had been uh, invited to do a work in, 70, in Building 77, where you saw the other pieces. And so we had uh, devised a work for this atmosphere for invention, kind of a positive 
So we had devised a, a mylar, big column of mylar. And as we were getting ready to make it, it was just such an emotionally hard time. And uh, I just kept thinking, maybe this isn't the right thing for this time. I don't, I'm not feeling this anymore. And then they asked us to think about doing something in building 92 uh, because they, they wanted a piece there. And so we thought, okay, we would do that. And the, the original work that we planned just wouldn't fit there. Everything was just like closing me off from doing that. And so we uh, decided to try to do this piece uh, that would be a more contemplative work and uh, speak about what was going on with the pandemic. And it felt right. It was nice that we had a space where we were the only work so we could kind of command it. And uh, so uh, I don't know, do you have the pictures that I gave you earlier? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, I can, I can share those, sure. Yeah, you could share those. Okay, and um, you, can, you can walk us through what we're seeing here. Yeah, I just wanted people to see, uh, let's see. So this is uh, the back of the piece. Can you go to the next one? Okay, so this is what it looks like from the front. Uh, it's 20 feet high and 20 feet across. The, you can go to the next. And this area here is a catwalk that goes behind the peaks. Uh, so since they had to close off the building right after we installed it, uh, it was decided that we would do some events and we realized that we could do some at night. And I thought, wow, this, this is a photo sill. We could light this and it would be like a gigantic lantern. And since this catwalk goes behind the piece, we could put people on the catwalk between the light and the silk and it would produce a gigantic shadow of the person that was there. So for people who are coming into the space and seeing the work at night, they could experience the impression of another person literally in the piece then as an image. So we're very excited about the opportunity to do that. So uh, on the, uh, so you can see from the floor, it's pretty dramatic looking up to this piece, but the spaces, I think it's, four stories high and uh, or three stories high and kind of narrow and kind of shallow. So trying to put a, a work in that space was pretty tricky, but doing something, uh, a fiber piece, the silk uh, was the perfect solution to that, to that problem. And having the other things in the space that were so gigantic, we needed to work in a scale that would work with these other things. So uh, I studied uh, fiber art at uh, Carnegie Mellon with Luis Perucci. And uh, I realized that, you know, mighty fiber was really <laughs> like the way to go in this situation. It provides scale, it's light, it's thin. And so, uh, so we decided to do a fiber work there. And uh, so it was very exciting. I did, I did put up a, a few of my paintings. I thought I might share them. Oh yes, but, please, right? that, that would be wonderful. And, okay. and also um, you're going to do, since we're speaking about the uh, atmosphere for invention, elegy installation, um, there is a way that people can experience, they, they can actually participate, right? And you have on May 13th. Uh, well, uh, on, the, on the 13th, it'll be a daytime show, mm -hmm. uh, but on the 20th and the 22nd, People can come and be in the piece, go on that catwalk and become a part of the piece as a shadow. We will photograph, we'll videotape them as they, uh, as they make their shadow in the piece. And then we'll put together uh, an edited work. Uh, I'm actually a filmmaker. So uh, we're gonna make like a, a video piece that we can put online and uh, share those impressions, those people actually in the work. I think it's nice to 
do something where the community can participate and literally become a part of the piece. So um, let's see, I'm going to flip my camera around so you can see. Okay, great. I, I just wanted to show a few paintings real quick and then we'll do the demo. Uh, we set up a tiny version, oh, I'll show you in the light. We have to turn the lights off to show you this. So this is like a baby version of the silk that we hung in uh, building 92. And uh, we've set up a light down here that will project up. So when someone stands in front of this light, their shadow will be cast onto the work and then it'll be visible through on the other side. Um, so I just, uh, just wanted to show a few paintings um, I've been doing some kind of like, I don't know, fierce. <laughs> it was a difficult uh, period through the Trump presidency and then the pandemic. So I was doing a lot of uh, white on black paintings on Tyvek, just large kind of uh, mournful works. But then as we started to uh, be together or be apart and alone, I don't know, I started doing this kind of delicate uh, like white oil oil stick uh, drawings on top of color fields. Uh, these are some older works. I've always been interested in um, uh, plant, tree, natural forms. Uh, Japanese maple. Uh, and I just have a couple more to show. This is, uh, I started doing these big, they're kind of like gigantic drawings. It's sort of about uh, the failure of the hand, the uh, imperfection of the mark. Uh, I was in a very bad car accident a little over 10 years ago and I couldn't actually hold a brush afterward for quite a long time. So I started working with uh, just making marks with uh, a little bit of sponge that I could just press onto the canvas. So I started doing these big fields that felt very cell-like and biological to me. I love uh, the, uh, the network, the neuron, the cell, macro, micro. So these images are uh, part of that work those ideas Tracy All right. um, Tracy we have um, a few comments Christina said she loves that painting um, Elizabeth said that uh, this has been so moving hearing your story oh and seeing thank you work. thank you so much you guys uh, so shall we do the demo you want to see yeah. the shadow in action Bruce is here this is Bruce Tosky my husband Bruce was uh, I don't know, he just helps with everything and helped me do the installation and uh, has just been, uh, without him, I couldn't have done any of this stuff. So and we're gonna- Tracy, is this how you're, you're getting ready for this installation is with this model? Oh yes, we decided to do some tests to see what kind of brightness we would need to, uh, to make a shadow. And so we get some pretty fabulous shadows. And uh, so this is what we're hoping to project, but in the big, big piece uh, on the space. Bruce is looking pretty scary with these. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, we'll, we'll videotape people as they're back there and uh, use that sort of maybe the slow-mo to, uh, to make a, a montage of uh, images of the community, of people who are there thinking of maybe the person that they lost, their own trial, and uh, putting together something that is made of the impressions of the community. So we have several, several comments and questions for you. Um, this is, well, first of all, Christina says, ha, ha, ha appreciating Bruce's interpretive poses. <laughs> and um, and Lori, Lori said, this work is amazing. It really seems like you're finding another way to express your art 
during a difficult time and it's, it's really inspiring. Um, and then we have a question from Amanda, which is, um, is this white or is it cover colored light? It's white light. And actually it does look kind of blue here, uh, but I think that's just uh, uh, some kind of a trip of the <laughs> of this space, the light and the combination with that orange uh, border, it makes it kind of be the compliment, you know? So, uh, yeah. Well, well, thank, thank, thank you, Bruce. We really <laughs> we appreciate your participation and support. I know he also uh, supported the installation of the flag, uh, the prayer, prayer flag. Yes, um, yes. Um, so we, I think, I, I, are there any other questions specifically um, for Tracy or, or anything people would like to take a closer look at in her studio? Um, otherwise, we're going to bring on the other uh, artists and, and Carly and really anybody and everybody. We can do gallery view. We can bring everybody on um, and, and have a conversation. Um, oh, Lori asks, can we see the painting again? Lori, if you wanna unmute yourself and say which painting you'd like to see, um, I think that our settings are such that uh, you can unmute yourselves. Uh, let's see, we're gonna allow everybody to unmute themselves and start their videos. Um, so please feel free to, um, oh, maybe I need oh. Andrew's help with that. Why, um, while you guys are getting yourselves set up, I, I just was checking my notes because I knew I would uh, forget what I was trying to say. But one of the things that we're doing in this installation is uh, Bruce and I are both uh, into uh, uh, experiential work. And so uh, Bruce is a part of the uh, deep listening community and experimental sound. So we've created a binaural audio work that it accompanies this piece. So when people come, they can scan a link and listen to it through their phone headsets. It's a five minute work, but uh, I, I'm very excited about that. And having this, it takes you into another space to uh, be in that audio space. And uh, so we're really excited about that aspect. It's kind of a, a whole other dimension. So we, we have Lori here. Lori, which, which, uh, which painting would you like to see? Tracy, I'd like to see the one again when you said you were, I believe you said you were injured and you had to just make marks. Oh, yes, yes. It's beautiful. Uh, oh, thank you so much. I did uh, uh, quite a few works with this, uh, technique. I, I, I wish I'd had a little bit more space to put more things up, but uh, I wanted to work large. So I, it's kind of interesting the way it starts to, can you see the sort of like, uh, it starts to look a little bit like DNA. Do you see the kind of the helix sort of up in the left-hand side of it? It starts to, things start to kind of coalesce as I was working and, uh, uh, I, I really like this sort of cellular quality of this mark. I felt like a, an electron microscope. Is this the work you're talking about? Yes, yes. I love oh, it. Thank, thank you very much. I, I'm going to, uh, when we link the uh, audio file, we, we made a website to accompany the work so that people could uh, revisit and maybe go back and see themselves in video. And I'll have a link to my paintings there. So there will be, uh, you'll be able to see the series of work. And also I did a, a, a small series uh, on brown paper shortly after, when I first started painting again after the accident, that's all about uh, traumatic brain injury. And uh, so, and I've also worked here in the studio with uh, uh, brain injured people uh, doing painting workshops with them to uh, give people a chance to uh, have a little bit of joy <laughs> after, uh, after an injury like that. So, uh, so we've, enjoyed, we've enjoyed doing that very much. Thank you. Um, thank, mm -hmm. thank you so much. What a great, great question and um, really interesting response. And I think what we're gonna do now is, is bring on uh, all of our speakers, or if you if you want to turn on your cameras, we can even go into 
gallery view if there are folks that want want to turn on their cameras, but no pressure. <laughs> um, so we're going to go ahead and and spotlight all of our all of our speakers. So there we have Paul. We're going to bring on Paul. There we okay. go. And Carly. Okay. All right. Um, and is there is there um, um, you know, I'll jump on. Why not? Uh, and if there's if there's anybody else uh, that wants to come on, but we're just I uh, at this point, it's really about uh, audience questions. Um, and I'm just going to kind of scroll back here and see because we did have a question um, for Jackie a little bit earlier. Um, let's see. Oh, this was actually this was a question for Paul. So Lori wondered um, or Lori, do you want to ask your question for Paul? Sure. I would love to ask my question for Paul. <laughs> Paul, my question is, when you were a child and you first got interested in art, did you paint? Did you enjoy painting? And also, if you did paint, did you ever dip your toys in paint? <laughs> That's a good question, Lori. Um, thanks for signing on, by the way. And uh, uh, I did, I actually, I did artwork um, when I was very, very young. Uh, we all did, of course, but I mean, even, you know, as I was, uh, you know, into my teens, I was very interested in art, but I don't remember ever dipping any, any, uh, any toys into paint. So uh, it's a no, it's a yes and a no, I guess. What, and Paul, what gave you the idea to dip a toy into paint? Um, actually the first, um, the first piece I made kind of removing my hand, uh, in a way, you know, from a traditional kind of brush in hand was, um, I don't know, I, I just, uh, took a ball and dipped it in paint and, and put the canvas, the canvas, uh, at an incline and just kind of rolled it up. That was, that was the first, um, time that I used something other than a, t a traditional brush. And, um, and then it just led to different types of you know, experimentation. And the first kind of um, major solo show I did in New York City um, was called Remote Control. And all the paintings were made with remote control cars. So it just went on from there. That's, that's, it's so great. Um, Thank you, Lori. That's really uh, like fun and thoughtful question. Um, is there is there anybody else that's joining us that uh, we have we have all these folks watching? If anybody has any questions, or if the artists have questions for each other, or Carly has something she'd like to share, um, you know, we uh, we also have a, a comment here from Christina. She said, "Thanks, thank you all so much for sharing your work and spaces with us." wouldn't be able to attend in person if this was at the Navy Yard. Uh, appreciate celebrating the creativity that came out of COVID-19. Um, and I don't know if any, anybody has something to say, say to that, anything they, they'd like to share. Carly? Yeah, I think you know that's been um, one of the silver linings with uh, the last year is doing more virtual programs. And even though we're gonna phase back in on-site programs, because there is such a curiosity about the site and people wanna visit, come on and to come on a turnstile tour, of course, um, we won't stop doing the virtual programs. So it's been a really nice opportunity there um, to connect with people who there's so many people around the world. My grandpa worked at the Navy Yard or my mom was there. And so it's a way for them to stay connected to us. And of course, we want to see you in person, too. But, you know, we'll keep on doing virtual programs. And I know turnstile will be leading the charge there as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think there's something about, um, you know, access across um, people tuning in from around the country and the world, um, and also people that, that might have uh, difficulties um, getting out of the house for whatever reason. And I think we all now have a deeper understanding and, and connection to that experience from, I mean, you can't you know, from, from having been isolated and, and, and having that sense of, of being kind of feeling, feeling lonely. And I think the virtual spaces has given us a, a, an outlet. Um, and I'm, I'm just really grateful to, to all of you um, for coming on uh, and, and taking us into your studios. This is an example 
we wouldn't have been, been able to take this many people into each of your spaces on a tour. <laughs> um, it would have been kind of like hard to fit in some of your spaces. Uh, and so to be able to do this in a virtual realm, uh, I think is really unique and, and we can continue to do this kind of thing. Um, is there anything, you know, this is Jane's walk. So this is the Municipal Art Society and the theme is Jane Jacobs and it's all about sort of community and human scale uh, and the city. Um, any, any, any reflections kind of on what, whether it's the Navy Yard community or where you live or your home and your neighbors, anything that connects back to your art that you've been processing over the past year? Um, or is that just, it's kind of a big, big question. <laughs> Um, well, well I, I'll t I could, I could take that one. Um, I mean, I have thought a lot more about, about service, you know, just, you know, um, I do this thing in my studio by myself, um, but there is other parts of my life where I am doing service. I, I serve on my um, community. I live in my Maranac on the arts council and um, that's my service to my community. And I think it's really important to bring the arts out to the people. Um, in any way possible. So part of doing the mural was another way of, of doing, uh, bringing the work to the public. So um, I think it's important to share what we do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Amanda has a question. Uh, so um, yeah, actually I actually had a question for Jackie because I'm, I'm new to, to, to you and to your work. Um, I see that kind of color and pattern play such a big part um, in your paintings. So how do you choose the color for the paintings? Is it kind of based on a color mood? Is it based on where the paintings or the murals are gonna be displayed? Um, you know, I, I don't really know how the choices are made. They're just, it's kind of really intuitive. Um, I've, I've done a lot of colorful paintings and so I kind of feel like I have a good handle on understanding color. Um, I'm trying to push away from like the regular way that people look at color. So I'm trying to um, make colors that you wouldn't think go together, go together. I actually think any color can go with any color now. It's just, it just doesn't even matter anymore. So um, it's not really an answer, but um, I, I just, I love color. I love it. I mean, just like mixing it on the palette, like, you know, with my brush, creamy color is, is, is fun, you know, so. Uh, yeah. Thank you. You're Jackie, welcome. Jackie, it makes me wonder if at home you've painted directly on the wall like you did. <laughs> <laughs> I have not, although my walls at home are painted colors. They're not white, they're colors. So um, no, that, that was my first and only mural so far. So hopefully I'll do more. I'd love it. It was so much fun. Um, Tracy, I, I don't know if, if you and, and if you could share um, some of the past collaborations that you and Bruce have done together, uh, like audio installations or some dynamic, because I know that the two of you have collaborated on various projects through the years. We have, we have. Well, a big thing that we did, uh, gosh, for the whole time we've been at the yard, we had an ongoing series in our studio where we brought in uh, experimental uh, image makers and experimental sound makers and uh, had live performances. And then we had a salon style discussion. And so we did this salon uh, regularly for a, quite a long time. We may be actually bringing some of that community to the Navy Yard uh, possibly this summer to uh, do a, uh, an outdoor nighttime extravaganza so we'll see if that comes together but uh yeah we uh bruce has performed gosh all, uh, we've traveled around and uh wh where was that the, the uh At copenhagen uh, you know we did a, a and, european tour of a, of a piece that i did uh called underpass and it was all kind of sourced from the 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 places underneath the the highways in Brooklyn, and and actually I did. A, I was associated with the Issue Project Room uh, for for many years uh, when Suzanne was still with us. Suzanne Field, and, uh, and uh, you know um, I also would do sound walks where I would take people 
on walks, you know, down um, in the uh, 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 around the the highways and like Dumbo underneath the, like underneath the bridges. There are some amazing sound environments there. I've got a lot of really good response from people, you know, with that because it's it's just kind of a, a unique, tonic, you know, environment. We've tried to uh, use our space, the Navy Yard, as a kind of a a, a nexus for people who work in this way, in this experimental way. It's a very interesting community of people doing this work. And also you work with the uh, disabled guy, people here, you brought people here. And, uh, yes, we talked about stuff. that a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Tracy, yeah. and you you mentioned you're a filmmaker. Um, is there, a, what, what kind of filmmaking? Um, have you done? <laughs> Everything. Well, I I no. I actually started out doing like rock videos uh, in uh, Los Angeles at Propaganda Films, which has now become like a, a big powerhouse. But that was a long time ago. David Fincher was there at the time, and uh, a lot of uh, very exciting uh, English British directors. And uh, uh, then I went on to work in advertising. So I did a lot of, uh, you know, commercial work. And uh, uh, most recently after I've been out of the business for a while because of that car accident, but about five or six years in, some friends asked us if they, if we thought, they asked us if we thought we could fix a film that they had purchased. So we worked on a crazy, crazy project called Elvis from Outer Space. Uh, and uh, it's available now on, uh, let's see, it's yeah, on sorry. Amazon Prime and Apple TV. You can watch it for free on Amazon Prime, I think. So, uh, so that's the very highly, uh, very high style erudite film that I've been working on most recently. But we are actually in the process of developing a show right now. And the theme of the show is death. It's called The Death Show. And it's about a pragmatic look at death and dying in our society. And it compares different cultures and different, uh, different areas of the, of the country and of the world and how they deal with death and dying. So we're gonna be interviewing some monks and some death doulas. And uh, I'm very excited about that. So that's this summer we're working on that. That sounds, that sounds so interesting. And um, we have one final question Then I think we're gonna need to wrap up. Um, and it is from none other than Lori. So we're gonna bring you back on, Lori. <laughs> oh, we need you to unmute. I'm asking you, there we go. Okay, sorry. Paul, I, I had a question about the painting that you said you put away for a long time and took back out because it looks as if it's 3D and, and is that what you were trying for? And was that the original or did it become that after you brought it back out? Uh, 3D, you mean uh, like more of a sense of space? So yes. Just, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I, in painting these, ba you know, backgrounds kind of doing, painting the background last, it's something that tends to happen. Um, it's not the logical way to, to make a painting, but it um, interests me because inevitably there's a kind of tension that's created. So um, it does look like maybe more spatial, but there's also a kind of tension in the, in the background because it's not a smoothly painted. So um, I don't mind that it has a, a, a sense of space. So I guess that is intentional, yes. Um, but I wasn't thinking of it as 3D, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 3D is not the correct terminology, but it definitely looks like there's more depth. Uh -huh. More depth. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I get it. Yeah. And, and that, that did change in the painting that it, um, that it was definitely enhanced by painting back into it. Yeah. Thank you. Very interesting. Yeah. So I, I just like to thank uh, everybody for, for joining us. Um, uh, please do check out the Brooklyn Navy Yards website for um, different kinds of um, events and programs and virtual experiences, uh, some of which Carly mentioned. They have this 
great series uh, with with artists um, where, uh, well, Carly, you 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 spoke about this earlier, but the creative history series about the history of the Navy Yard and artists teaching different skills. Um, so that's that's a really fun one. Definitely check it out. Share it with your families, um, and uh, join you know join us. We're going to be going to Bednark um, as part part of um, New York City uh, by design. Um, that's coming up. We have several different virtual programs, so just check out our website. Um, we're also going to be going live to Building 127 with the architect. It's the former space that Sweet and Low used to be in, um, and so we're excited to kind of share uh, this structure and how it's being uh, sort of reimagined and its historic integrity maintained. Um, and so that'll that'll be a really fun program as well. And that's that's also part of um, New York City by Design. Um, Carly, I'm going to let you share any closing thoughts. Uh, since you were the mastermind behind uh, this whole exhibition and we wouldn't be together tonight if it weren't for you. So if you can take us out with anything, any teasers or anything that you'd like to share. Oh, sure. Well, I just wrote in the chat section a big thank you to you guys for pulling this together yet again with ease, all these parts. And to everybody in the spirit of Jane Jacobs, support your local networks and your local communities, the fabric that make your communities unique, whatever that may be. And artists are working artists. You know, we need to start, start thinking of them as needing our support. So sign up for that membership right now. Go to that program. That's super important. So I just want to underscore to everyone. Um, I like to say artists are the glue that bind everything together. And they're where the ideas come from, the inspiration comes from. So if you like that creativity, you like that energy, support your local artists and your arts organizations. Thank you so much, Carly. Everybody have a great night. And thank you, Jackie, Paul, Tracy, Bruce. Um, you were all so wonderful, Carly. Um, and have a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much, thanks Cindy. Thanks to you guys, too. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. And thank thanks you. to everyone who joined us, of course.